Welcome to Productive Joy with Dr. Christie, where fun meets action. Hi, friends. Welcome to Productive Joy. I am so excited to introduce you to my friends today. Um, but before we get into all of that, just know you need to be following this podcast. This is your shot of B12, and I want more than anything for you to not to miss a minute of it. So please, please follow, share this with other people so that they can follow too, so that we can continue to turn fun into action. That's the whole goal here. But today, I have Troy Whitehurst with, with me. He is an avid Steelers fan. That's very important to know. He also is an educator turned insurance guru. I'm going to call you a guru. <laughs> he has his own insurance agency. He's a husband and a dad, and he is highly competitive. He was an educator, but is still an educator, just in a different space, and he's coaching people all day, every day. So, Troy, welcome so to Productive Joy. I am so, so excited that you're joining me. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> okay. So, Troy, here's what I've learned is that people have a short attention span and they're only going to pay attention for a quick minute before they decide to move on. So can you give us some sort of 30-second excitement that will get people to keep listening today? Well, you know, that, and that is a choice all in itself as well, you know, but I can tell you that if anybody has gone through any type of adverse experience in their life, they definitely want to hang on to their seats because we're going to give them a fresh perspective here today to help them change their mindset and, and maybe even shift their perspective to get through those trying situations. It doesn't matter if you have an unexpected illness, if you have death in your family, if you were in a relationship and that person just walked out the door on you. Today, we are going to give you a breath of fresh air to make sure that you can keep it going. Yeah, we are. Because I didn't mention in your intro that you are an author of a book called Choose to be Happy. I cannot think of a better marriage than Choose to be Happy and Productive Joy. Like, this is pretty perfect. But you didn't start out as an author, Troy. Tell us a little bit about you. How did you go from teaching in the state of Florida <laughs> to now being in North Carolina, being an author, and doing all of these cool things? Yes, indeed. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I used to be a filmmaker before I got into teaching and coaching sports. Filmmaker? So, How fun. Yes, yes, indeedy. So worked in film, television, and radio for a number of years. And then, but I started coaching at the time that wasn't paying the bills. So I had, had to find something else to do. And so that was where the teaching came into play. Now, I started my teaching career and coaching here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I had the opportunity in 2015 to go to one of the most amazing public schools that I have ever been a part of, and that was Lehigh Acre Senior High School. And it was just an amazing journey. I'm on the Gulf Coast of Florida. It's summertime every day. I'm at an avid national demonstration school. I'm teaching one of my favorite classes, and I'm getting to coach basketball all in the same space. It was totally amazing. But I, I can tell you, I was only there for a short period of time because I ended up with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis in 2016. Wow. And at the time it was really devastating. I was, I was, I was depressed. You know, it's like, Hey, the doctors tell you, you have something that's incurable. And I really felt like life was over. My body was not performing in the way that it was supposed to. I could barely stand and walk. I barely had enough energy to get out of bed in the morning, but I can tell you that I changed my diet. I started speaking God's word of healing over my life. I started using some natural supplements and a year and a half, my symptoms reversed. And it was, but it was a process. It's like, it's one of those things where, you know, you can believe for a breakthrough, but I needed help with my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And just th those are, those are the challenges that people can face. And there's so many uh, situations that people can face and it seems insurmountable. Some people may be facing an insurmountable amount of debt. You know, you know, somebody could have had back to back laws. It's no rhyme or reason for why things happen, but there's a purpose. So wherever there's crisis, crisis. And so there's a a pain with, with there's pain. There's always a purpose for it. It may not even be for us. We're going through it so that we can share this journey with somebody else that's coming behind us. 
Uh, but because of that uh, diagnosis, I had to find something else to do and which I started working in insurance. So I first started with Aflac and then I was able to branch out and create my own agency, which is the TW Insurance Service. TW Insurance Service in North Carolina, but let's back up because you dropped a couple pieces of gold there and I need to pick them back up. So you <laughs> said, I, I was able to believe, but I needed help with my unbelief. Can you unpack that? Because I'm going to guess that there are at least 50% of the people listening that might have some unbelief right now that's preventing them from the blessings that are meant to be theirs. So tell us about that. Right. Well, you know, I'm a faith-based person. And that is actually something that came from scripture in Mark 9. There's a, a gentleman and his son is, he's, he's, he has some demon possession going on and, and Jesus is trying to heal him. And, and, his, and he says to his dad, he's like, hey, why don't you believe? Mm. And his dad's like, I, I do believe, but I just need help with my unbelief. And so there's so many situations that can put us in a space of, Unbelief. We believe things can get better. We and we hope things can change, and and we believe that the situation is going to turn around. But there's some doubt in our mind. Like, will it really work? Will it really change? When is it going to change? And so there's things that happen in time, and it may not happen when we want it, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Uh, and this is not a small diagnosis. That's life altering. Multiple sclerosis is, is it affects everything. And so I'm going to guess there was some devastation, right? You had to kind of mm -hmm. go through all of the, the different components of grief to get to the point where you even realize, okay, there is hope, but I do have some, some unbelief. And you mentioned some natural supplements and some diet shifts. Tell us what you did to, um, cause he here's, here's where I, why I'm asking. I believe that our sphere of control is teeny, teeny, tiny, but our sphere of influence is enormous. And it sounds mm -hmm. to me like you decided to exercise your sphere of influence over your body and what you could control so that great things could happen. Is that true? That is true. So I, I learned how to eat for my blood type. Like uh, everybody's bodies make different. And so, but, and so there's certain foods that we're supposed to eat based upon our blood type and our, our body is going to process those foods in, in a variety of different ways. So in learning, in learning how to eat in that manner, I still had to make the change in my mindset. So there's something amazing that happens when we renew our mind towards a situation. So my mindset became, there's nothing that tastes as good as being healthy feels. Oh, now, <laughs> We could all learn a lesson. You, Troy, you can stop right there and we don't need to hear anything else. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. So yes. you you said your blood type. Well, first of all, what is your blood type? B. B. Okay. So B positive. When we're talking about B, your B positive, mm -hmm. well, that's appropriate, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as a B positive, I choose to be happy. So many good things happening right there. What did you learn you had to eat? Like, I, I want to know all the things. Right. So let me, let me rewind a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm facing, I'm dealing with this illness. I got all of this stuff going on in my body. The doctors have prescribed me some medication. Now the medication that they gave me was starting to shut my kidneys down. Oh goodness. Okay. And uh, yes. And it was, and then they were suggesting they wanted me to do these needles and infusions and say, Hey, you know, you got to go to the hospital They sit in, the, in this room for about eight hours with an IV in my arm. And, and I was just like, I don't want to do that. I said, God, it gotta be another way. So again, so going back to his word, he says, by his stripes, I'm healed. And so he says, I also, I know the plans that I have for you. These are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So I had to bring him into remembrance of what his promises said. And, and so he showed me some different avenues to take. Now, I have not eaten chicken, beef, or pork in seven years. Wow. Okay. But I have also not taken any prescribed medication for MS in seven years as well. And I lead a normal lifestyle. So wait, those, those are the three things that you cut out? And nothing else, or I, there had to have been a so, so, you know, I, I do eat fish. I eat fish. If it comes out of the ocean, I'm pretty much good. Okay. Um, 
I'm not eating an octopus or anything like that, but. <laughs> they do <laughs> look like they're out. still moving. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, no, they're just, no. But if it comes out of the ocean, I'm pretty much good with it. And then I do a lot of plant-based stuff as well. Uh, in, in addition to a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, one of the biggest things that really helped me out was green juice. Um, okay. You know, like you, you can blend it up in a, in a ninja or or you can get it from, you know, grocery store, things like that. But that really helped. And so I learned that with the green juice, there's extra enzyme. Like vegetables are good for us in general. But when we, we're drinking the juice and we're not uh, taking all of the enzymes out of it, because when we cook it, it, it cooks the enzymes out. But now we're putting those raw vegetables in our body. Now those extra enzymes can go to places where uh, we have ailments in our body. And that's where the healing process comes into play. Wow. Oh my gosh. So cool. Okay. So you figured this out and it sounds like you chose not to keep it to yourself, right? You knew that this was mm -hmm. what was right for Troy and it did give you a miracle, but you chose to write a, write a book that would help other people find their miracle too. So why don't you tell us the impetus for the book? And, and what you discovered in the writing process and why you're choosing to share it with the world. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, again, like I say, when you go through pain, there's a purpose for it. And it, and it, what everything that I encountered, it was not for just me, you know. So, you know, one of the things in the book we talk about is hope. And so God gave me a different revelation for hope. And it stands for heal on purpose every day. Wow. Okay. Heal yes. on purpose every day. He, yes. Heal on purpose every day. So you have to be intentional about your healing. And it's not just healing from like physical sickness or something like that. We, we have all had some level of emotional trauma and a lot of it is unresolved trauma, you know, and sometimes we may need to go see a counselor about it, but we try to resolve it on our own. There are people that are out here that can help us get past whatever these situations are, but we have to be intentional about it, you know? And so that's one of the, that was like one of my words for that year was like, let's be intentional. Can I be intentional about healing on purpose? But this actually, this concept actually started in my Abbott classroom <laughs> at Lehigh Acres. So, because I, there were, there were so many challenges facing me during that time period. Like I moved to this city and I never looked for a place to stay. You know, I, we were doing the, I got sent to Denver. I got sent to Philadelphia to do the presentations for the Abbott training. And I never had a chance to look for a place to stay. Like literally when I was interviewing for the job, I don't even think I really interviewed for the job. I think it was just offered to me. <laughs> but just getting the the process of the paperwork in, I had, you know, I had to let my other school district know 30 days or they were going to keep me there. But the last day that I had to be able to notify them that I was not taking or not keeping my position, I got a call from the secretary at Lehigh Aiken saying that my paperwork had cleared. So literally I... I I was in prayer about it because it was just taking so long for the paperwork to go through. And then I said, God, if you, if you want me to go to this place, then you're going to open up the door. And she literally called me the morning of July 16th, which was wow. the last day that I could let my school district know. And so I took that journey, but I had to leave July the 19th to go to Colorado. And I left Colorado. I went to Philadelphia and then I had to go to orientation. And you didn't have anywhere to two live. days after orientation, I needed to be in Virginia because my oldest sister got married. And then, and then I had to start work that Monday. Oh my goodness. And so I never had a place to stay. So I said, okay, well, I could just, I can just, you know, find a hotel for a little bit, find a place to stay and I'll be good to go. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And then, you know, teachers don't get paid in the summertime. Every teacher should make at least $80,000 a year. I just, I really believe that. We'll put well, that into existence. I agree. <laughs> yes, indeed. But so I, I, I didn't have a place to stay. I'm staying in hotels. I'm bringing in coffee and, and stuff into my room. And, and so it became a mantra in my classroom. Like, hey, regardless of whatever you have going on, choose to be happy. 
it's your choice. You know, you can't control what situation you're born in. You can't control what anybody does or says to you, but you can control your happiness and your peace. It is yeah. within your within your reach. Well, and we need to back up because um, although you and I are very well versed in all things AVID, I'm not sure that every listener is going to know what AVID is. So AVID is an acronym, but it's really a mindset um, shift that reg- AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. And what we do is we help educators get better at what they do so that students have options when they graduate. But Troy, you taught it for years. So what would be your explanation of what AVID is so people know? Like you say, it, it is a mindset and it's, it's for students who need a map maker as a, as an avid teacher, I think it's called a cartographer. Yeah. And so, you know, you need help from going from point A to point B, but you don't, you want to get to point B, but you don't know exactly how to get there. And you just need somebody to help nudge you and guide you and get you to that place where you can get to that end goal or dream. And so honestly, being an avid teacher prepared me for where I'm at now. Being able to, you know, help people get past whatever their situations are. You know, we we so again, I was a teacher and a basketball coach, but now I'm teaching and coaching people from a life perspective. I'm helping them with their insurance needs, but I'm also helping them, you know, get and change their perspective on life situations. So we, just like yourself, you know, we do business coaching, we do individual coaching, you know, helping people with relationships and things of that particular nature. And but AVID is one of those things. And I think that being in Florida really engulfed me in it. I, I believe in the course wholeheartedly. The proof is in the numbers. Yeah. You know, if you, you take a student, even you have some high flyer students, like half flyer students sometimes can be more introverted. So helping them be more comfortable speaking in front of people and, you know, being able to think on their feet. That's what the course is about. It's also for that student who like, hey, they have the potential to be on the A and B on the road, but they just need some help with taking notes. They yeah. need some help with organizing their thoughts, organizing their binders. <laughs> you know, kind of uh, their life. let's be honest <laughs> yes you know managing time time management is a big component of success and there's a lot of adults that don't know how to manage their time properly and and all of those things are what that course is about but it, it takes and you're building relationships sure you know like we met through that yeah you know and it's just building relationships somebody shared this podcast with me who was my avid person as well, too. So big <laughs> shout out to Misty, by the way. <laughs> oh, sweet Mimi. I adore her. She's wonderful. Yes, Yay. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Mimi. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, and Troy, so so you, you, you just keep saying great things. And a minute ago, you said, uh, well, before I asked you to define avid and all that good stuff, you said that you used to say to your students all the time to choose to be happy. And I do believe wholeheartedly that that it is a choice. And that's why I named this podcast Productive Joy, right, is is that I think that that's a choice too. But, but if you had to define productive joy, how would you define it? Because that's going to lead us into talking about your book. Right. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, okay, so you got production and you have joy. So when I think about productive, I think about action. Mm -hmm. So nothing happens until you take action. We can talk about it all day long, but until you do it. So, and when I say when it came to me changing my diet, because now don't mind, this was hard. Like Memorial Day was hard for me. Like I would love to put a rack of ribs on the grill and you know, sausages and all this other kind of hamburgers and steak and all that kind of good stuff, but I can't eat it. I can't eat it. So it's not like people will can say, hey, well, you know, just change your diet. No, you have to change your lifestyle. Yeah. You have to change your mindset towards these things. You have to change, like when, when it comes to like even money and spending and things like that, you have to change your mindset towards those things. And so joy, see, joy is a fruit of the spirit. So that means that there's a seed there. there, So anything that comes from the earth has a seed and anything that that has a seed is good for you, you know, because it it, it grows. And so that joy, because we can operate from the spirit or we can operate from the flesh. 
you know, and I, I can tell you, I remember, so July 4th for me is a different type of day. That's Independence Day, but that was my independence and my journey towards freedom. Yeah. Like, the, like there's a lot of people that, that are bound from a spiritual standpoint, you know, or, or they get into their own way because we, we start to overthink things yeah. and, and sometimes we self-sabotage, you know, <laughs> but we have to be able to get out of our own way. And, and so, because if not, we're not going to be productive and we're not going to be able to get to that place of joy. So, yeah. So when I think about productive joy, yes, I have to take the action. I have to be the hero in my own story. I have right. to be active in my own rescue. You know, and so as I begin to change myself, I can attract the other thing, the other help that I need to be able to get to where I need to be, where I've been purposed to be. Well, and that's each individual person. If I had to pick a thread that has gone throughout this conversation so far, it's that we have more influence than we realize. We have influence over how we feel based on diet, based on action, based on mindset. We have influence over how we react to things by choosing where we we put our focus. And so you wrote this book called Choose to Be Happy because I'm guessing that that also, well, I, I know it's a choice, you know it's a choice, but we need all of our listeners to know it's a choice too, that that is something we can choose choose to do. So in the book, do you give ideas for how to make that happen? Like, tell us, tell us a little bit about what we're going to gain. Yes. It's, it's really about shifting your perspective and shifting your mindset. Like, you know, you hear the cliche when life gives you lemons. Make lemonade. What? You yeah. make lemonade. That's, that's the natural thing. But see, I, we, we serve a God that does amazing things. So in the book, there's a concept when life gives you lemons, you make orange juice. <laughs> Oh, I like it. <laughs> mm. So, and then, you know, so people will say, well, how can I make orange juice from lemons? No, you can't. It's not possible. But I can find the necessary ingredients so that I can make orange juice. So it's just like, you know, no, can I change? Can I turn water into wine? No, I can't. But it has happened before. It has happened before. So I need, I need, that's what I need. I need that relationship to be intact so that I can have the ability to turn the water into wine or to turn these lemons that life has given me and I'm going to make orange juice. It's not to say I can't, I didn't choose for these lemons to be placed into my life, but I'm just not accepting it and accepting that I have to make lemonade from these lemons that I've been given. No, I want orange juice. Orange juice is a lot sweeter. Yeah. And, and you get to decide what you're going to do with what life gives you. That's that's ultimately the lesson you're teaching there because y you, you might be handed lemons, but you don't have to use them. <laughs> Yes, exactly. they are not exactly. an ingredient in orange juice. I think that exactly. would just make it bitter, and we and we don't need that. Well, and going back to your your definition of hope, healed on purpose every day. I think I'm sure that's in there too. That that's that idea that you know they they say hope isn't a strategy, and it's not. But understanding that you do have influence over over even hope is powerful. Just try what I appreciate about you. And I've known this to be true in all of our interactions is that you choose to find the good. I, I have always been a firm believer that the good and the bad are both always there and where you put your focus is what you're going to see. And so what are you going to focus your attention on? Where are you going to put your energy? And that's, that's to me what you have done a masterful job of. And you've given us a, a map since, since you used that reference, you've given all of us a map for how to how to choose to be happy. That's that's pretty amazing. The other thing that I think is pretty amazing about you is how you wear your faith. So, you know, everybody doesn't believe the same things, and we don't get to determine what other people believe. But we can certainly model what it looks like if somebody has a relationship versus a religion. And what I hear from you is that your your relationship with Jesus is what makes you who you are. It isn't about a religion and that I think a lot of people are seeking that. A lot of people are looking for where do I fit in all of this and who's leading me? And so kudos to you for, for knowing how to make that happen powerfully and authentically. I think that that's exactly yeah. what you like. Yeah, definitely. You know, the thing is, yes, no, it's not about religion, you know, where people have all of these rules and things of that particular nature. That's not what Jesus was about. You know, he was about bringing love to the earth and and getting people to change. Something as simple as like, okay, so yeah, there was a rule. They said, hey, you can't do any work on the Sabbath, okay? But 
uh, he encountered a man who needed to be healed. So he healed a man. What am I not? I'm supposed to just leave him, you know, like a lame duck? No, not at all. So when it came to rules, he was really a rule breaker, you know? <laughs> so again, he went through, he, he went, he contradicted all the things that people thought that they knew. And and it really is about that relationship. Honestly, I'm a walking miracle. Mm -hmm. I well, a walking yes. miracle, you know, and so there's nobody that can tell me that God is not real. I I feel it in my body, you yeah. know, and and so you hear certain things, you know, and and it just comes from you spending time. So in my journey of being an insurance agent, of course, and like you say, you have a schedule. We keep our schedule. So my first appointment when I started in insurance, I started in 2017. My first appointment every day on my calendar, and it's been the same way since 2017, is time with God. Nice. That is a very, that is a, that is the first thing that I do in the morning when I wake up. So, and and I think that just giving Him that first fruit of my day, and then just spending time and listening to what He has to say. Yeah, we can pray about things. It's interesting, you know, people take prayer out of schools, but prayer is not taken out of school because you can pray. And it's interesting because nobody wants to pray at the school until something happens at the school. That <laughs> doesn't make sense to me, you know? So either we're going to pray or we're not going to pray. What are we going to do? So, <laughs> and, and, I, and I really believe it's just, we have to be able to take action. Like we're, we're trying to find, trying to fill a void, like your, your happiness, your joy. This is not something that can be given from external because, you know, you can make a whole lot of money. You can live in this nice house. You can drive this nice car. You know, you got this perfect relationship, but you still got something missing. There's, there's an emptiness that's on the inside. And so nothing external is what's going to make you happy. You will, you will experience that joy when you tap into what's on the inside of each and every person. Ah. I love it. And I want people to know where they can find your book and where they can find you. So how might someone find Troy Whitehurst? What, what are the best ways? TroyWhitehurst.com. <laughs> That's easy enough. <laughs> That's easy enough. Yes. And so, and then, you know, there's a link on that website to our, our insurance website, but the insurance website is WeGetYouCovered.com. Anybody from ages zero to 85, doesn't matter what city, what state that you're in, we can get you covered. You know, I think working in insurance has been a rewarding thing for me. We've discovered solutions for people, you know, that are affordable for them. We work with a lot of small business owners as well, helping them put benefits in place for their employees. But when it comes to, you know, health insurance, like I sat through a number of open enrollments as a school teacher. I had no idea what the health insurance was. I didn't know what it worked. I didn't know about the deductible, the max out of pocket, not until I got sick. Sure. And then I was like, oh, this is what this is about. Yeah, okay. oh, this is important information. <laughs> right. I chose the I chose the 8020 plan because it sounded better than 7030. I didn't yeah. know what that meant, yeah. you know, but now we're able to educate people about it. And we're always looking for uh people that want to shift their careers. Like my my career change was done by force. I didn't choose that. I didn't yeah. have a choice, but I could choose to bring that happiness to what I was given. I took the lemons that I was given and I made orange juice. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you've inspired us to do the same because we do have more, more influence than we realize over how we react to things, how we handle things and where we go from there. But Troy, it's time for rapid fire. And that is so important. Are you ready? Are, are you feeling excited? We got a couple rapid fire questions for you. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. All right. All right. Question number one, sir, what is your definition of fun? Oh, anything that makes you happy. <laughs> there you go. So you have to define happy first, right? Yes, indeed. Right. So there's a lot of things that's fun to me. You know, playing chess is fun or playing cards is fun. You know, going to a Pittsburgh Steelers game is truly, truly fun. It, it, no, it's uh, cold. It, like it's I, cold there all the go time. when it's warm outside. No, I don't want to sit out there. I don't want to sit out there in cold. But spending time with family is fun. Reading a book. Sitting down with somebody as positive as yourself, like this is fun to me. I have seen a great time. Good. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Question number two. How yes. do you know that you're showing up as your authentic self? I can't show up as anybody else. I can only be me and 
you know, some people going to like me, some people not going to like me, but I'm just, every day I'm looking for my tribe. I ask God to show me who are the people that want to need my help every day. And those that don't, they just don't. It may not be right now. They may not need my help, but at some point in time they may, you know? And so I just want to be in, in the place where, where my people are, whatever that tribe is that my people could be in Abu Dhabi. I don't know. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just wherever they are. That's that's my child. My people can be in Japan. My people can be in Florida. I love orange juice. <laughs> you know, so I love sunshine. I love water. You know, it's just wherever my people are. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so how do you show up as your best self on your worst days? Hmm. I just remember, like, so... I don't consider anything a bad day. I, I, I think that they're the challenging moments. So again, it's, it's just all about how you frame it. Yeah. We have challenging moments. We have situations that come. I can tell you between 2000 and 2010, I lost some people that were really close to me. And, and again, I, I can acknowledge it now in hindsight. I can say, yes, I went through depression during that particular point in time. And I was at a really low point in my life. and it took a, another catastrophic event to kind of bring me up out of it. I was I was in the process of shooting a film. My best friend was murdered at the age of 22. That oh was goodness. that was the first off. Yes. And so that really threw me for a, a whole loop. In. And so I, I was thrust into self-medicating, you know, treating people, just just not treating people nice at all. Like I was a different person at that time period. And but I remember we were, I was shooting in the process of shooting a film and I was riding with somebody. I was in the back seat. I had fallen asleep and we got off the highway and we went around these, we were on this back road and the gentleman just started speeding. He kept increasing his speed and we hit a boulder head on at 80 miles an hour. Oh my. And I did not have on my seat though. Oh my. And actually everything went black. When we crashed, everything went black. I thought I had died. You know, but I just remember falling out of the car and I'm laying in the grass. I can't even make a phone call because my cell phone had died. Luckily, somebody came by on the road. And he called the ambulance and stuff, and we were able to get medical attention. But I, as I was laying in the grass, I remember that was the first night that I distinctly heard God speak to me. And he said, if you do not start taking your life seriously, I'm going to show you how quickly I can take it from you. Wow. Wow. That's a wake up call for sure. It was. <laughs> Definitely. Whew, okay. Well, since you've taken us to school like six different times this particular day, here's what I know <laughs> to be true. When people are listening, they really can only hold on to one major idea. And so if people can't remember anything else about the last 30 minutes, what's the one takeaway you really want everybody to have? Your happiness is your choice. Mm. And and I think that if if we are intentional about doing those things that make us happy and seeking happiness, then we're going to find that joy on the inside. So, yeah, it's, it's your choice. It's in your hands. It absolutely is. And if you need a little help with that, go get Choose to Be Happy. I, I happen to know it's very easy to find on Amazon, so you can start there or go to try, Troy. Whitehurst, that's a mouthful, right. T-R-O-Y-W-H-I-T-E-H-U-R-S-T dot com. Okay. And just check him out. This guy is pretty amazing and he's got a great story to tell. And so thank you, Troy, for sharing your story with our podcast listeners and my Productive Joy friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode. I want to thank Nian, my producer, for always making this stuff work <laughs> and work so very well. And I just want to thank all of you for choosing to come here to get that shot of B12 so that you can be positive too, <laughs> even if that's not your blood type, right? My, my goal with our time together is always that you figure out a way to turn fun into action. 